Have you ever played a game on Roblox where the combat is so good that it single-handedly carries the platform? I'm sure for most of you guys, the answer will be yes. Over the years, there's been quite a few games which change the standard for combat and inspire a slew of other developers to implement the strategy that made the combat successful in their own games. Most iconically are games like Black Magic, ABA, and Rogue Lineage. In recent years, there hasn't been any game like that. Some people might point to Deep Logan, and while it was successful, you don't really see too many games trying to emulate the parry system. And the result of this lack of innovation from game developers is a stale, uninspired player base. So instead of complaining for once, I'm gonna actually try to do something about it. More on that though, after a word from the sponsor of this video, Opera GX. Do you notice anything strange about this scene? We as gamers have insane attention to detail, and will always opt for the best possible choice. That's why you'd never be caught wearing a noob outfit like this. If you want to be the best version of your gamer self, you need to make the best choices in every aspect of your setup. And believe me, the browser is the most important part. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably using Chrome. And truthfully speaking, Chrome shares so many similarities with the noob. They're both old, ugly, outdated, and basic. So why not make the switch to the best browser in the game? Lo and behold, Opera GX, the browser made for gamers. The GX store is home to over a thousand mods, which allows you to transform your browser's theme into that of a game like Roblox or pop culture media like Better Call Saul. What I love most about these mods is that they all do something unique. For example, the fart pack makes a fart noise whenever you type and the GX boy turns your browser into an arcade. My favorite mod is the obviously Roblox inspired blocks theme. You can activate all your mods simply by clicking one button in the sidebar, where it sends you to a page where you can customize all your mods according to your needs. This is what my theme looks like right now, it's absolutely dripped out. And even better than that, some themes also have a custom background music. You can activate this by clicking on the easy setup menu in the top right, and then enabling the background music feature. Once you've done that, if the music icon is enabled in the bottom left, you'll start hearing background music whenever you're idle. There's also optional noises whenever you type and whenever you close and open tabs. Now I understand that for most of you guys, homework is a priority, but Opera GX has you covered even in this regard. By heading to the easy setup menu and activating AI prompts, you get ChatGPT and ChatSonic as your personal assistants, and with a click at the bottom at the top of the screen, I can shorten this entire article about Theodore Roosevelt's life, and with no extra input, thanks to the integration of Opera GX, you get all this detail. By now, if you're convinced to switch to Opera GX, but you're concerned it might be a hassle, don't worry because you can import all your data from your previous browser. Just by clicking on the settings and heading over to synchronization, with just one click, you'll be done importing all your data, including your extensions, your passwords, your browsing history, and your bookmarks. Considering it's free, I couldn't recommend Opera GX anymore, don't be a noob, there'll be a link to the installer in the pinned comments and in description. If you're a true gamer and not a Roblox addicted dogmat, you know that games outside of Roblox have way better combat systems than games on Roblox. And I think the reason for that is quite elusive, it's pretty easy to miss. Contrary to popular opinion, it's not actually the Roblox game engine that's holding the games back. It's mainly just a symptom of the status of the development teams. Consider the game on screen right now. For Honor, this game has one of the best multiplayer combat systems, and in my opinion, it's simply just the best. What separates a game like For Honor from Roblox games is that For Honor is made by Ubisoft, which is a company worth $3.4 billion. The budget of development costs in the advent of a game like For Honor is in the tens of millions. And what they can do with this money is hire industry-leading developers who have decades of experience in game development. When you contrast that, with the demographic of Roblox developers, comprised largely of 17 year olds who are making games in their school's computer science class, who have a collective budget of 1000 Robux, the distinction is night and day. It's clear to see why a game like For Honor would be much more polished than a Roblox game. AAA games are business endeavors, while Roblox games are largely passion projects. And it's common knowledge that the subject of your passion doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be good. It just has to be something that you like. Are you familiar with the concept of qualia? It's a term that psychologists use to classify our subjective conscious experience. Think of something that you could never possibly explain to another person. Perhaps the redness of the color red, or the warmth of warmth. No matter how hard you try to explain redness to a blind person, 
They will never come closer to grasping the truth of what is read. Extrapolating from this, we can never really know what someone else is thinking. When we use words like warm and red, we're describing what we sense, and we assume that the people around us sense things in the same way, even if we don't know that's true. This, broadly speaking, is why our language fails us. Whenever we're talking to someone, we make so many assumptions, and just probabilistically, a lot of those are going to be untrue. That's how we lose information, and why we can end up talking to someone, and they can never really understand what we're saying. We can't put it into words for them. So as I've started my developing journey, the biggest thing that I've learned is to put my plans into illustrations or drawings. This way I avoid a lot of the subjectiveness in trying to explain something to people. If I have a question for my developer friend, I just show him a little drawing or I make one on the spot, and he's infinitely more likely to understand what I'm trying to get at. I don't know why I thought this was important, or why I'm even explaining this, but I think that if you're involved with a lot of collaborative work, you can use this to your advantage. So this is the script I wrote, which makes all the UIs on the client side. UIs are things that are on your screen, which typically don't actually exist in the world space. In a normal game, this would include things like menus, loading screens, and things like that. With my little project, UIs are going to be probably the most important thing. I'm trying to emulate a similar style to For Honor, where the position of your mouse on your screen determines the guard that your sword is in. Your sword's guard allows you to initiate different attacks, and if used defensively, it allows you to block and parry enemies' attacks coming from that direction. Unlike For Honor, I'm going to be using four guards rather than three, and the reason is simple, with four guards it gives the attacker an advantage because it's harder to defend against those attacks. It gets around a lot of the issues that Verona faces with people opting for defensive options, and suits it for a player base who likes fast fights like Roblox players. I'll run through the logic on the script real quick here. So we use runservice.heartbeats, which is a loop in Roblox which allows you to run specific code every frame. It starts off by checking that the player has a sword equipped and that they can actually change their guard. Obviously you can't change your guard while you're attacking, while you're stunned, and while you have no stamina. It then calculates the angle of your mouse relative to the center of the screen using an inverse tangent. This is the thing that I was trying to draw earlier, and it might sound a bit complicated, but it's pretty simple. You just subtract the mouse's position from the center of the screen, and that distance acts as a line. And with trig equations, if you have multiple lines, you can calculate the angles between them. Then once it has the angle, it checks what quadrant of the screen it's in, then it fires the GUI changed event in replicated storage, which basically tells the server, hey, you need to change the value of my GUI position. Now the interesting thing about this is why you need to actually tell the server to do it and not do it yourself in the script. It's quite a neat concept. So when you're working with attributes, if you change it on the client, then other clients and the server itself cannot see what you've changed it to. Now this is a problem because the other player obviously needs to know where you're attacking from so it can block that attack. So if the server sets the GUI position, it's replicated onto every client, meaning that every client can know that your GUI is in that position. You want to do the minimal amount of work on the client to avoid giving exploiters power because they can change a lot of the client scripts. So once the server's set the GUI position, this script will wait for the GUI position to change, and it says, hey, I know where the GUI position is. I'm going to make all the arrows on the screen, which are the attack indicators, transparent, but the one which has the GUI position is going to be the least transparent. This will basically make it clear to the player which direction they're currently guarding in. This script also waits and checks if you're attacking, and if you are, then it makes all your arrows transparent. This lets the player know when their attack starts and when it ends. And this by far is the most complicated function in this script. It's run whenever you lock onto an enemy target, and it basically goes and takes your enemy's GUI position, and then it makes a billboard UI on the player. A billboard UI is a UI that is shown in world space. So think for things like health bars above someone's head, that's a billboard UI. And this UI will be an arrow, which shows the current direction that a player is guarding from. This code is run every frame, so it updates whenever the enemy changes their guard position. Whenever the enemy attacks, the arrow that they're attacking from gets increasingly more red to indicate the fact that they are attacking. While they're attacking, it pauses the code, so the rest of the code can't overwrite an arrow onto the red arrow. And finally, if you stop locking onto the player, then it destroys all the arrows that are on them, or it puts them on to the next player who you switch to. And the final function in the GUI manager checks when you've locked onto a target, and when you have, it sets up the enemy's UI, and it sets up your own UI. And when you've locked off, it makes all the UIs invisible. 
I'm using the studio's test future to see what it would look like if I have two players who are locked onto each other. So if I lock onto an enemy, I get these four arrows on my screen, which show me the direction that I'm currently guarding from. Now I'm not a good animator by any means, but I do have a bit of a background in HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts, which informs my decisions on how the guards should be. Each directional guard is a historically accurate stance that fighters would hang out in. So as the enemy player equips their own weapon, they get their arrow which shows up next to their body. And this arrow will inform where you should attack them and where you should block them. So if the enemy is in the flu guard, which is the guard that I'm currently in, the down guard, then you can block them by also being in fluke. You can also do some pretty smooth transitions between guards, so if I move from one guard to another then I can attack instantly and sort of mix up the animations to get the enemy off guard in a sense. As the enemy attacks there's a window by which you can block and this is shown by that red arrow. For light attacks which are currently the only attacks in the game this is a pretty small window to block but heavy attacks which will be added later will mitigate this problem. So if I go in for an attack on the right, in the Vomtar guard, then I can damage them as they're not in that stance. However, as you can see, if I attack an enemy to the left when they're also guarding in the left, then that will cause me to get stunned and they'll block my attack. Now I'm fighting myself on two different clients, but I'm actually reactively blocking to each of the attacks to show that a defensive playstyle does actually work even against the fastest of hits. So you can easily counter this by doing mix-ups, which is when you just move from one guard to another and then attack quickly. This will give you some pretty easy damage, but the downside is it decreases your stamina really fast as each switch reduces your stamina and each swing reduces your stamina. And if they're able to block you during this, then you'll lose even more stamina, allowing your enemy to mount a turnaround and attack you while you're barely able to defend yourself. This will tie into a concept which I'll be adding later, which is stability, which punishes and rewards players depending on the playstyle that they're going for. A defense-oriented playstyle which doesn't move a lot is always going to be quite stable, which causes them to lose less stamina, be stunned for less time during blocks and parries, but the disadvantage is they'll be punished more for moving offline. Moving offline simply when you move to the side to avoid an enemy's attack. In my game there'll be dodges which will have iframes, and if you opt to use them, it's going to mess up your stability but you'll be able to move around a lot more. Doing stance switches and mix-ups will also cause you to drop in stability, so you should either forgo stability entirely and try to use it to your advantage as an offensive playstyle, or you could try and maximize it and keep your defenses up. None of these concepts are in For Honor, some of them are inspired by other games like Exanima, but one thing I want to add just to keep my game from being a tangent away from a sword fighting game, is to add skills and abilities that aren't necessarily melee weapons related. Imagine fighting a battle mage who uses their magic energy to defend from multiple directions and is also able to disrupt and attack you from range. You'd be able to guard these attacks just by blocking in their direction like any other attack, but it creates some unique implications in teamfights and allows for the inclusion of different playstyles given that they're balanced by certain counter mechanics. A ranged defensive mage will probably do a lot less damage than a melee build and will have a lot less access to mobility options. Anyway, I feel like I've talked a bit too much, and I just want to focus on implementing these concepts and working on my scripting ability. I've been doing this for about 2 or 3 weeks, but it feels like I've learned a lifetime of information. So I'm going to keep up on this trajectory, and I hope I can inspire and encourage you guys to do the same.